Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time it's my sixth annual update on developments in quantum computing. In particular, I'm going to provide a non-technical overview of some key innovations at IBM, Intel and Microsoft. But before that, let's begin with a summary of what quantum computing is all about. Conventional or classical computers process data using binary digits or bits that can represent a value of either 1 or 0. In contrast, quantum computers process data using quantum bits or qubits. Due to a quantum mechanical phenomena called superposition, qubits can exist in more than one state at exactly the same point in time. Bizarrely, this means that a qubit can have a value of both 1 and 0 simultaneously. But when a qubit is observed, its state always collapses to a value of either 1 or 0. In quantum computation, qubits represent the probability that their observed state will be either 1 or 0. And because there are an infinite range of probabilities between 1 and 0, this means that a qubit can represent a far larger range of data values than a classical bit. Pairs of qubits can also become entangled. This means that the state of one qubit is tied to the state of another, regardless of how far apart the two qubits may be. By taking advantage of superposition and entanglement, quantum computers will be able to accomplish tasks that are too complex for conventional computers. Such tasks are likely to include running molecular simulations, with future quantum computers expected to improve our understanding of physics, chemistry and biology, and in turn our practice of engineering and healthcare. We should therefore expect quantum computing to see the revolution across a wide range of industrial sectors well beyond traditional computation. Indeed, it's likely that quantum computing will help to deliver new medicines and new materials before it changes what we do on our smartphones. When it comes to building a quantum computer, qubits can be created in many different ways. These include using superconducting electronic circuits, trapping ionised atoms or squeezing light. Most of the time this requires the materials from which qubits are constructed to be supercooled to almost absolute zero. However, photonic quantum hardware from a company called Xanadu, and which I discussed in last year's update, uses qubits that function at around 25 degrees Celsius. Right now, Xanadu's systems do rely on a supercooled photon counter. But the company predicts that photonic quantum computers able to work entirely at room temperature are a future possibility. Whether supercooled or not, all qubits rapidly decohere and become unstable. As a result, quantum computers require high levels of error correction and error mitigation. To perform useful work, most future quantum computers are also likely to require tens or hundreds of thousands of qubits. Given that current hardware generally offers no more than around 130 qubits, there is still a massive mountain to climb. So, let's see what progress has been reported in the past 12 months. For many decades, IBM has been a leading quantum computing pioneer. Back in May 2016, it was the first company to offer cloud access to quantum hardware. And in May 2022, it once again expanded its quantum computing roadmap. This charts IBM's ambition to progress from its current 127 qubit Eagle processor and to deliver far more powerful quantum centric hardware and software solutions by 2025 and beyond. In the second half of 2022, IBM plans to release a new 433 qubit processor called Osprey. But, as it has now revealed, in subsequent years the intention is to scale up the number of qubits in a system by moving beyond the limits of a single chip processor. Or, as IBM explained, we don't plan to realise large scale quantum computers on a giant chip. 
Instead, we're developing ways to link processes together into a modular system capable of scaling without physics limitations. IBM is working on three different scaling techniques, the first of which is called circuit knitting. This will allow quantum computational routines, known as quantum circuits, to be broken into smaller pieces that can be run on different quantum processors, with the results knitted back together using a classical computer. To achieve circuit knitting, in 2023, a 133 qubit processor called Heron will be released. This will feature control hardware to allow real-time classical communication between separate processors, so facilitating multi-threaded, parallel quantum processing. IBM's second scaling method is to build multi-chip quantum processors. Here, two qubit gates called chip-to-chip -chip couplers will connect different quantum chips together. This innovation is slated for delivery in 2024 in a 408 qubit processor called Crossbill. Internally, this will link together three smaller chips to function like one larger quantum processor. Finally, the longer term goal is quantum parallelization. Here, individual quantum processors will be linked together with quantum rather than classical communications links. Initially, in 2024, IBM plans to connect three 462 qubit single chip processors called Flamingo to create a 1386 qubit system. And then, in 2025, the intention is to quantum link three 1386 qubit multi chip processors called Kookaburra. This should result in a 4158 qubit quantum computer, although potentially more processors could be included. Looking even further ahead, IBM states that its goal is to build quantum-centric supercomputers. As it explains, the quantum-centric supercomputer will incorporate quantum processors, classical processors, quantum communication networks, and classical networks, all working together to completely transform how we compute. In anticipation of the power of such future systems, in July 2022, the National Institute of Standards and Technology in the United States announced the first quantum safe standards for cybersecurity. These were partially developed by IBM scientists and reflects the growing concern that companies may experience harvest now, decrypt later attacks. Or, in other words, there is a growing risk that data will be stolen today for quantum decryption in the future. IBM is far from the only pioneer seeking to develop systems with a large number of qubits. Also looking to scale up is Intel, who in March 2022 reported the successful mass manufacture of qubits using conventional optical lithographic and associated processes. Specifically, at Intel's D1 manufacturing factory in Oregon, researchers from Intel and QTech managed to mass-produce quantum dot spin qubits using standard microprocessor manufacturing techniques. Previously, qubits have been produced on silicon using electron beam lithography. This avoids the need for chemical polishing that can damage the qubits, but is not scalable to industrial volumes. However, what Intel has achieved is to mass-produce qubits using its standard nanolithographic chip manufacturing process and traditional post-processing. In total, 79 300mm wafers were produced, each containing 82 processor dies with up to 55 quantum gates. 20 of these wafers were then analysed and demonstrated a viable component yield greater than 95%. Intel and QTEC's achievement is quite remarkable and could one day allow quantum processors to become widely available. Or, as the researchers concluded their paper in Nature Electronics, the compatibility of silicon spin qubits with fully industrial processing demonstrated here highlights their potential for scaling and for creating a fault-tolerant, full-stack quantum computer. Another major player in the quantum computing arena is Microsoft, who now offer a cloud service called Azure Quantum. 
This brings together resources from a range of other pioneers that include Honeywell, Iron Q, Rigetti and Toshiba. By backing a range of partners and research teams across the globe, Microsoft has avoided putting all of its eggs in one quantum basket. However, the company has for some time pursued the development of topological qubits as the most likely technology for delivering stable and hence scalable quantum computers. And in March 2022, it reported on a key breakthrough in this field. Whilst a topological phase of matter has been hypothesized since 1937, it has never been unambiguously produced in the real world. But Microsoft's Azure Quantum team have now managed to engineer hardware that has induced a topological superconducting phase bookended by a pair of so-called Majorana zero nodes. Further, they've been able to quantify the stability of this phase, so removing the biggest obstacle to producing a topological qubit. Explaining exactly what this means is well beyond the scope of this video. But by demonstrating what Microsoft terms one of the most exotic pieces of physics in the universe, they have taken a giant step towards building a quantum computer with hardware level fault tolerance. In turn, this should make a topological quantum computer highly scalable. And if you want to know more, there are links in the video description. Whilst IBM, Intel and Microsoft are all doing amazing things, they are far from the only pioneers taking a spin on the quantum computing merry-go-round. Indeed, right now, there are more than 30 companies and academic institutions working on quantum hardware or software. Not least, these include Google, whose quantum AI website has been expanded into an excellent educational resource. Topics covered include Google's 54-qubit Sycamore processor, the cloud computing service it now offers to developers, and a Python library called Circ that can be used for programming and running quantum circuits. Other pioneers who've reported milestone innovations in 2022 include D-Wave Systems, who on June the 16th provided cloud access to a prototype of its Advantage 2 quantum computer. This has over 500 qubits that are based on a technology called quantum annealing. This is somewhat controversial and less controllable than other qubit technologies. However, quantum annealing is also easier to scale, with D-Wave having launched a 2000 qubit system back in 2017. And, according to their June 2022 press release, D-Wave expects to deliver a 7000 qubit advantage too by 2024. Whenever I post one of these updates, there are always some people down in the comments typing things like, Chris, this is rubbish, quantum computing will never become a commercial reality. And given where we are today, that could still be correct. This said, the computing industry does have a strong track record of making the apparently impossible possible. And personally, I think that quantum computers will become a commercial proposition by the late 2020s or early 2030s. They won't replace classical computers, they won't be used for the same things, they'll run different types of applications, they'll be used in conjunction with classical computers, but I just have this very strong feeling that it is extremely unlikely that IBM and Intel and Microsoft and Google and all of the other pioneers, I think it is very unlikely that all of these companies are wrong. And even if they are wrong, there can be no doubt that today hundreds of millions of dollars have already been invested in quantum computing, which means it's already part of the computing industry. References for the things I've discussed in this video can be found down in the video description. And if you want even more information, look at the quantum page on explainingcomputers.com. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.